Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellbite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's Wednesday, and the patch notes for patch 11.4 have been posted, which means it's time for us to break down the top five changes in this week's patch. Obviously, we're going to be starting here from the bottom, because of course, why would we start anywhere else? And we're going to be going ahead and talking about the Samira changes, as I think these are the biggest things and the reason you guys are clicking on the patch notes in the first place. Though numerically balanced, her ban rate is suggesting that people just do not want to play against Samira at all, and I can honestly understand it. She's a very safe pick, which is very surprising, giving her very aggressive playstyle, and Samir can get a ton of value when she's able to find the opportunities to dash in, use her defensive tools wisely, and it just makes her really hard to punish in lane, which lets her scale, which then means that she's able to always get to those sort of team fight dominating powerhouse moments. Whereas I feel like she should be a champion that is easier to punish in the early game, who if she doesn't get to scale up, that you, she doesn't really do that much in game. So I do like where these nerfs are at. Now, these are definitely going to give you a lot more windows to punish Samira and make it so that she, she, like, these are just generally nerfs. I know Riot did say they're trying to improve her kill potential mid to late game, but realistically, these are just straight nerfs to Samira. Her Blade Whirl's duration is down by a quarter second, which does mean that timing is a lot more important on that ability as opposed to just press it, you'll probably block something. You really need to make sure the W is timed well. Wild Rush can't dash to allies anymore, and the speed has been reduced by uh, 450, so she's a lot slower while dashing, she can't dash to allies, and Blade Whirl is a shorter duration, which generally means that all of her defensive tools took a hit on this patch. In addition, the bonus damage ratio she gets off her passive and the damage ratio on Flare were both nerfed early on. They do scale to be better than they were prior to her nerfing, but it does mean that until level 9, she's going to feel a lot worse than she did before. Just across the board, even with the very small buffs that she got to Flare and Daredevil Impulse and how they scale, Samira is going to be feeling a lot, lot, lot weaker than she was before. We can mostly ignore the ultimate nerf here because the cooldown isn't that relevant. Mostly it's the style meter. This will come into play on occasion in team fights, but because Samira already kind of builds items that give her cooldown reduction anyways, she doesn't care that much about the Inferno Trigger cooldown. It's, just, it's mostly gated behind her passive either way. So these are some huge nerfs to Samira. I'm excited to see where these shake up because I would like to see more people play Samira, but because she's just banned all the time, there's never really any opportunity to do it. So either way we're going to be moving on from there hopping down a little bit further to talk about the moonstone renewer nerfs on this patch now renewer i feel like was balanced on release but everyone was so caught up in the imperial mandate hype that they just totally slept on renewer and then it got buffed a couple of times for riot to try and say you know hey this item exists and it's a good item you should build it and but no one really cared until mandate got basically nerfed into the ground and then everyone kind of said oh hey moonstone renewer is crazy and we're going to build it on everyone first because this is super super good now the nerf here is, again, it doesn't look that big, but remember that this is sort of over a long period of time, getting 20 less healing, especially per champion level, uh, across the board is a big deal for Moonstone Renewer, and it really does mean that it's going to be healing a lot less in the early stages of the game. It makes it less of a must-buy first. It's a lot better if, you plan, if you're planning on playing for the late game, if you're planning on playing to, you know, in, in a mid-game power spike, getting a few more items under your belt, and really having more extending t extended team fights. Right now, because of the healing power reduction, it it is just not going to be as good early on, so it shouldn't be favored by sort of mid lane champions or junglers that have been building it because they can kind of sit on it and say, yeah, it's going to give me so much healing, it doesn't matter, in conjunction with Staff of Flow and Water. This change is going to really reduce the power that you get by getting that early Moonstone Renewer up. Moving on down to the jungle changes. Now, if you love them or if you hate them, junglers have been the most influential champions in the game since preseason. A lot of junglers have been kind of historically gated by needing to buy a jungle item first, right? They've always had to kind of spend uh, their first huge chunk of change on getting that jungle item, getting their boots, and then they've been able to actually proceed with their builds. But since preseason kind of did away with all of that, junglers are able to immediately go into their first item, a preferred item, something that actually synergizes with them as opposed to sort of of generic catch-alls like uh, the warrior enchant and the like so because of that I feel like junglers have been very strong and it really does feel like the game hinges on whether or not your jungler is ahead or behind if your jungler is the one that failed his first gank and got killed you almost all automatically lost the game because of how much weaker your jungler was and rather how much stronger the enemy jungler is now comparatively so even if you are not a fan of jungling and you don't like these changes 
generally speaking, these are intended to make it so that it's less of a coin flip. So if your jungler does die level three trying to take crab, it's not that big of a deal because jungler, jungle in general has less of an impact on the game. Generally, experience in gold has been decreased across the board for every camp, with the one exception of wolves. So junglers will be receiving a lot less experience and a lot less gold for just sort of AFK power farming, which I do kind of like. Now, Riot did say that they will be monitoring overperforming junglers following these changes to see if they need further nerfs. So if there is a champion that is totally broken in your opinion that didn't receive any nerfs on this patch, do keep an eye out because Riot will be looking into them in the future if these changes aren't enough to get those champions down a notch or two. Let's go ahead and scroll all the way up here, and we are going to be now talking about the Camille nerf here. Now, this doesn't look like a big deal, especially if you're not a top lane aficionado, but for a long time, Camille's been able to sort of auto-win lanes by W-maxing due to the heal it gives her and the percent health damage. It just kind of allows Camille to constantly keep pressure on you in lane, while also topping herself up, and because it does percent health damage, there's basically no point at which you can take that damage comfortably. It doesn't matter if you're a tank, it doesn't matter if you're a fighter, that ability always hurts, and she's kind of able to constantly maintain pressure because of this change, or because of this ability, and essentially keep you out of the game without ever having to actually commit to all inning and fighting. This change is going to give her opponent a lot more room to breathe in between sweeps, while also reducing your overall sustain, which means that Camille is a lot more likely to have to back out of a lane after she loses a trade, rather than sticking around and just kind of Wing you a few times to get her health back up. The two seconds, again, doesn't seem very long, but over the course of several minutes, it adds up, and this definitely will tune down the amount of power that Camille has in the top lane, hopefully without utterly killing the champion. Finally, for change number five, we're going to be talking about Caitlyn here. Now, I've made my peace with Caitlyn. I hate dealing with her in lane, but the whole point of Caitlyn is she preys on weak early games. She's supposed to be the champion that you pick when the enemy team says, we're going to play all for late game. You bring out the Caitlyn and say, ha, huh, that's cute, because I'm going to poke you down with auto attacks. I'm going to shove you under tower. I'm going to take your towers early, then rotate. And she's just able to do that very efficiently, while not necessarily having the late game of these sort of other late game champions that she's able to prep. On. So I do like that buffing her up is reducing the power of Samira and Kaisa and Aphelios, the former two of which are being nerfed on this patch anyways, so it's sort of a double whammy to champions like Samira and Kaisa, because you really are just getting nerfed down to the ground, and then Caitlyn is getting a buff up here as well. So I do kind of like where these changes are at. I like the thought process of buffing Caitlyn. The damage growth and attack speed growth aren't huge deals, but they do let her better compete with these scaling champions for longer. It's less about the extreme early levels on Caitlyn now, because she will scale slightly better and keep pace with them for slightly longer. So in general, this means that there's going to be more time for Caitlyn to continue bullying these early game champions and preventing them from scaling into the powerhouses that they can become. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. Those are the top five changes in patch 11.4. Go ahead and let me know which changes you're most excited for down in the comment section below. I am really digging the Camille change and the Samira nerfs, especially because hopefully Samira is available more often. I do like playing her. I do like playing against her. So we'll see where those end up, though. People may still just ban her because why not? She's Samira. But let me know what you guys think in the comments, of course. If you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days like today as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.